Hi, I'm Alice Creswell and today I am here where we've been staying in this converted chapel in North Wales and I'm going to tell you a bit more about that in a moment and how it is connected with the Welsh Revival. So I want to talk about Evan Roberts and the Welsh Revival and what led up to that amazing revival and outpouring of the Holy Spirit happening back in the day and what we can learn from that now and also some things that the Lord is doing because he is moving really powerfully still in the UK, in Wales and I'm going to share some of that as well of, of present day move of God and and really how we can then pray into and position ourselves for this coming move of God that we are seeing beginning to develop now right across the world. And then um, I want to pray for everybody as well. So keep watching to the end and I want to pray for you, pray for all of us, for the Lord to move again. Now in my recent video, we were actually on Bardsey Island in North Wales and I was sharing how we, you know, we're, how we're setting up our miracle cafes and me and Rob, my husband, we know we're just following the Holy Spirit and we've left our home and we're going wherever the Holy Spirit sends us to help set up more miracle cafes around the world. And while we're waiting, you know, for the next miracle cafe to get ready for us, you know, to need us to go there and help them get launched. Um, we, what we didn't realise is we had just been following the Holy Spirit and finding the cheapest places to stay for a week here, a week there. And amazingly, you know, I was sharing this in the last video, how we ended up following the Pilgrim's Way of, of North Wales. And we started in Hollywell. We went near Bangor where our cafe is. And then we ended up in Aberdaran and then on Bardsey Island. Well, what's really interesting is this converted chapel that was mentioned in the newspapers of the day in the Welsh Revival for what was happening here in this village. We just rented it, we got a really good deal with the owner and we've been staying here the past two weeks, so tomorrow we leave. Um, so I just wanted to, while we're here, I thought it'd be a great opportunity to talk about the Welsh Revival. I've got Welsh heritage as well, um, I might talk about that in the next video. Now, in the early 1900s in the UK, particularly in Wales we're talking about here, which is one of the, um, the countries in the UK. There's four nations in the United Kingdom and Wales is one of them. And it's where we've been living for the past few years. Um, really incredibly, in the early 1900s, there were the beginnings of something, a move of God beginning to happen already. There were little rumblings and there were meetings popping up here and there in Wales. People really getting hungry, getting full of the Holy Spirit. and then in um, 1904, there was a guy called Joseph Jenkins and he was holding meetings in Wales where the Holy Spirit was moving. He was just one of these examples. There was this young lady called Florrie Evans and she, she just broke out in one of the meetings and she was like, I love Jesus Christ with all of my heart. And things started to begin from there. And then we have a young man who you may have heard of called Evan Roberts. He was from a, an, a place in South Wales. Now, I don't speak Welsh, so I'm sorry if I butcher this, but it's Lochor. It's spelt L-O-U-G-H-O-R, and that was a little village that he lived in. And he would go to a local chapel, a church, but in Wales it's called chapels. He would go to Mariah Chapel as a boy and as he was growing up. And he was really fervent for the Lord and quite a serious young man. And at the age of 12, he went down to work in the coal mines, in the pits, which many people in Wales across the UK have done that even until recently. And... But it was such a hard life and from the age of 12 he was down in the pit but he was continually, he had his Bible, he was praying, he was reading scripture, he was really spending time with the Lord, even doing mundane and difficult manual labour and they would just get filthy black from all the coal um, and they'd be underground for, you know, from early in the morning till late at night. And he, he had such a heart for, for God and he was really praying, God, God send revival. We want to see revival sweep this nation. He prayed, apparently he prayed for 13 years or thereabouts. Reminds, reminds me of me praying for miracles before we saw any, you know, for about 12 years. You may have heard me mention that. I would pray, Lord send revival. I want to see healings. I want to see miracles. I want to see dead people coming back to life. I want to do the things that I'm reading in the Gospels. And I would read books like 
on past revivalists like um, Evan Roberts and the Welsh Revival and it really would stir me and these stories that I'm sharing let them stir your heart as I'm speaking because Jesus is the same yesterday, today and forever and he, what he did in 1904-1905 in Wales, he wants to do it again, he wants to go beyond that. This time it's not going to end, it's going to continue while we're, we are in the end time harvest, end time revival. Now Evan Roberts is a young man, he was as I say down in the coal mines and after a while he left that. And he really felt like God was stirring his heart and he was getting into his 20s now. And he felt like, I want to be, I want to go and get some um, Christian minister training. So he, he began that. He went to Bible school. He was only there for maybe about a year, something like that. And he, in the end, he, he left that to start at some meetings. He would be praying. And I'll tell you when he was born, 1878. And he died in 1951. So that gives you some idea. He was 26 in the year 1904. And he'd been praying for, you know, 13 years for revival. And he would pray things like, oh, God, fill me with your spirit. And he'd say, oh, God, send mighty revival. He was a bit of a modern mystic, really. Um, he would be praying all day long. Often he would fast, he would skip meals because he just wanted to pray and be with the Lord. When he wasn't praying, he was reading or studying his Bible or a theology book. Now, in 1904, there was a guy called Reverend Seth Joshua, and he was um, preaching at some meetings. And the young Evan Roberts was one of about 20 young people who went with the Reverend, Reverend Seth Joshua this one time and while they were there the Reverend Joshua was it, I've got a date here actually it was the 1st of September 1904 and the Reverend was praying and he said Lord bend us and I guess what he meant from that was Lord I you know let us let us just bow down before you. We surrender to you, Lord. Just take away, you know, not my will be done, but your will be done. Just come and, and bend us and do what you need to in us and through us and with us. The next morning, Evan Roberts said this. He said, I felt, because he still felt he was really impacted by Lord bend us, that prayer, something the Holy Spirit just grabbed him. And he says, I felt a living power pervading my bosom which I guess is like your chest. It took my breath away and my legs trembled exceedingly. This living power, he says, became stronger and stronger as each one prayed until I felt it would tear me apart. He says, I fell on my knees with my arms over the seat in front of me. My face was bathed in perspiration and the tears flowed in streams. I cried out, bend me, bend me. It was God's commending love which bent me. What a wave of peace flooded me. Following that, he says, the salvation of the human soul was solemnly impressed upon me. I felt ablaze with a desire to go through the length and breadth of Wales to tell of the Saviour. Wow, he was just so um, full of the Spirit of God and the real compassion of God for souls, for people that don't know him, for his lost children. And suddenly, Evan was like, I just need to get out there. And so he just kept praying, Lord, bend me, bend me, bend me. Oh, 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 <laughs> is what was quoted from him saying that. And he really knew that he'd been filled with the Holy Spirit at that point. Now, he began to have visions, and he was having visions of 100,000 people getting saved in Wales. And his good friend, Sidney Evans, he was like, Sidney, do you think, is that right? Is that of God? 100,000 getting saved in Wales in a short space of time? And Sidney's like, yeah, let's go for it. Let's believe God together. So they said, yeah, we're going to believe God for that. And they started to pray, Lord, we pray for 100,000 souls to be saved. And it's so important when the Holy Spirit puts something on your heart like that. And it was kind of random, like it wasn't in the Bible, didn't say 100,000 anywhere, but he really felt impressed upon him. He saw a vision. And when you have that, and ask the Lord to give you visions and to show you stuff. Evan Roberts had visions. We can have visions too. You know, I, I have visions and then pray into them. And you'll see God starting to, to make that happen through you and, and with you. It's amazing. 
So they started to really declare and to pray and to seek God for 100,000 people getting converted and coming to know Jesus in Wales. He was absolutely certain that God was getting ready to send revival. That was the faith. He stepped out in faith and he began telling everybody he knew to pray, obey and surrender totally to the Spirit of God. He would just say to them, do that. He also went through the season where he would wake up in the early hours, like one o'clock, two o'clock in the morning. I think it went on for like three or four months where he was in these incredible visions. He would have encounters with the living God face to face. He said it was like he was talking to it face to face, I guess like Moses did back in the day. And then he would be awake talking to the Lord face to face until about 5 a.m. He would just come back and go back to sleep for a little bit longer. Um, I know what it's like to wake up in the night. Quite often the Lord wakes me early and I pray. I've spent years praying and praying, seeking the Lord and just being with him and communing with him. And it's something you can do as well. And so I release that for you. Let's just say, yes, Lord, let's have that. Maybe you don't want it in the middle of the night. <laughs> Maybe you're not able to handle that. But supernaturally, why not? You know, supernaturally, we don't have to sleep i know naturally we do and it's good to get your eight hours or whatever in which i never get eight hours um anyhow back to evan so he's prophesying that revival is coming to wales and it's coming very soon and in late 1904 evan really feels the lord say to quit his um, bible school he'd done i think about a year of that and he goes back to his hometown, he goes back to Mariah Chapel, and he starts a series of meetings. And this is where it all begins to break out. Evan instructs the people now, we must believe that the Spirit will come. Not think he will come, or hope he will come, but firmly believe he will come. And that is a key there. Just like Jesus said to his disciples, you know, wait, and I'm going to pour out my spirit, he's going, to, he's going to come. And in Acts 2, we see that the Holy Spirit comes as they're waiting. And it wasn't that they had to wait a certain amount of time. Or, but I, you know, I think what it is, really, is the fact that it's faith. God really responds to faith. It isn't doing something because someone's told you to do it, or because you, know, you think it might be a good idea, or whatever, trying to do it religiously. You know, it happened with them, so I'm going to do exactly the same. You follow the Holy Spirit. And obviously with, with, with this revival in Wales, Evan Roberts was following the Holy Spirit and he knew without a shadow of a doubt that revival was about to come and that they were, they were really, he said, don't just believe or think, but firmly just know that the Holy Spirit is coming. And obviously it raised people's faith and expectation. And then <laughs> what happened? The Holy Spirit comes powerfully in those meetings and he just sweeps through and it says you know the church was crowded many were crying aloud in prayer when suddenly a powerful sound in the distance was heard as God's presence entered and filled the building. Evan himself led many of the meetings which were often characterized by cries of mercy, weeping, laughing, dancing, joy, singing. There was so much singing. And that was one of the main characteristics of the Welsh revival was the incredible Welsh voices singing in Welsh in their own language and praising the Lord, praying. There was brokenness. There were people lying prostrate on the floor. You know, local newspapers reported 20,000 conversions within the first five weeks and 85,000 conversions within four months of Evan beginning these meetings, these meetings in Mariah Chapel. A lot of it was young people. The young people were leading it. But when I say leading it, Evan was really careful. He wanted the Holy Spirit to move in power and he didn't want to get in the way. So he was really careful not to, to you know, just to take authority and to do what he thought. Um, he did whatever the Holy Spirit told him to do. And very often he would not even preach. And it would have been really easy for Evan Roberts and others around him to, to kind of wade in and say, OK, this is what we're going to do. And, but he really was careful to hold back and say, no, we're going to let the Holy Spirit move. After it began in Mariah Chapel, it moved to other places. It moved to um, Aberdeen was the next place that week that Evan went to. Uh, that's where my family on my father's side are from Aberdeen and in the next video I'm going to share some more about my heritage and what happened there 
in Aberdare, but it went to other places. It went to other places in the, in the South Wales, in North Wales. It really began to spread right across the UK and other nations as well. But the whole time, Evan was careful not to take control of the meetings, and that is something we need to learn, that we don't want to get into, well, it's worked like this before, we're going to do this. We're going to kind of... Um, I don't know, try and do something to get the Holy Spirit to move. What happened with Evan was he got to a position where he was like, Lord, bend me. Not my will be done, yours. You come. I surrender. And that's where we need to be, in that place of total surrender. Because that is when the Lord will come powerfully. And, you know, we are so on the brink of a major, major move of God. We've already, already got, you know the Holy Spirit moving in so many places now and it's just going to increase and increase and we need to learn from some of these past revivals that were absolutely incredible but then they petered out they stopped for various reasons this revival you know we don't want this to stop this is just going to increase and increase and we're going to have thousands and hundreds of thousands and millions of people being swept into the kingdom of God and being discipled and that's what this is all about but supernatural miracles this time we, we're going to have so many miracles and healings increasing i'm going to tell you about some of those in a moment and what is already happening these days that we are living in a lot of young people in the welsh revival again we're seeing young people come into faith um, someone said they felt the universal inescapable sense of the presence of god in the meetings they couldn't get away they were drawn they didn't even have to advertise the meetings in all these different places they were springing up you know it wasn't just evan roberts going places that to speak or to lead the meetings it would just break out in in lots of different chapels mainly in the chapels is what the lord was doing in those days in 1904 to 1905 but also out and about as well in the pits in the coal mines incredibly you know we hear stories of the pit ponies the the horses down there that that would be working in the mines they were used to people's foul language being and they were being told and shouted at and kicked to do what the men wanted them to do in the mines and suddenly all these people were getting converted the these miners were getting converted and they stopped their bad language they stopped shouting and kicking these pit ponies and so suddenly the pit ponies didn't know how to respond and you know we read about the the pubs the public houses they called them we call them pubs or bars were were empty the theaters were empty the chapels the churches were packed full of people that were having outdoor meetings because they could not get into the chapels many chapels sprung up you know across the whole of wales and just people's lives were dramatically changed they were having meetings where in the meeting you know there would be some people would start a song a hymn and they'd all join in and you can just imagine it can't you and um people were getting saved in and converted in the meetings um people were coming from across wales across the uk across the nations to the welsh revival one local reporter wrote that Though a thousand or two would often attend the services, order reigned. He says the meetings were absolutely without any human direction or leadership. We must obey the spirit is the watchword of Evan Roberts, he said. Three fourths of the meeting consists of singing. No one uses a hymn book. No one gives out a hymn. People pray and sing and they give testimonies. It was all led by the Holy Spirit and you know if Evan really felt that somebody was trying to get in the way or there was too much to control he would actually cancel a meeting or he would just not turn up and he would let the Holy Spirit move in power I mean how many ministers today would would we do that (laughs) you know we really want to let the Holy Spirit move I was actually thinking recently you know my dream is to see miracle cafes established around the world to help birth and move of God that's what we're doing but I say to the Lord Lord not my will yours be done and if you would rather do it with somebody else even though it's my dream I will step aside and let somebody else do that if I'm going to get in the way of any if the Holy Spirit moving because I don't want anything to get in the way and that's what Evan Roberts was like and I feel like that and I think like that but actually would I do that when it comes to it you know who knows um just amazing there's so many um 
you know, testimonies came out of that time. The Welsh Revival was ru running from 1904 to 1905, and the whole ethos, really, of Evan Roberts was bend the church, save the world. Lord, not our will be done. We surrender to you, your will, so we can see the harvest coming in. That's what we want today, isn't it? So even crime reduced dramatically. So even the courts ended up closing, and they actually would hand the um, judges, the magistrates, white gloves, which was basically to say there is no court case today. And that went on for some time because people were given the lives of Jesus and their lives were being transformed. It was really, it wasn't just a quick prayer. Yes, I invite Jesus into my life and then keep living as you were before. This was dramatic transformation of people's lives as whole communities, whole nation of Wales. So, you know, that was... 1904, 1905. It wasn't that long ago. God wants to do that again. And this time, he doesn't want it just to last, you know, a year, year and a half, whatever, two years. This, what we're stepping into now, this is the revival that's already begun. This is actually, this is going to be the end time harvest, the revival at the end of the age. That's what we're talking about. That's what we want to see. So 100,000 people were converted in Wales at that time. And the drinking, people stopped drinking, there wasn't the crime, theatres were deserted because everybody was down at the chapels, the churches, and they didn't even have to advertise services. What they did was very often, I've, I've read this, where people would actually see a light on in the chapel and they would know that the presence of God was there and they would go down there. And it wasn't, it wasn't lights, it wasn't like electricity or anything, it was the light of the Holy Spirit would draw people. And so they would all start coming from the town <laughs> into that chapel, into that church, and the meeting would commence, and it would go on for hours and hours. Um, in a, there's a, Wrexham is not too far away from here, where we are at the moment. In a Wrexham newspaper dated January 1905, it says, largely attended meetings are held at Cunwood. And March 1905, that's a little town in the north of Wales. March 1905, it says, No place in Wales has undergone a greater transformation than in Cunwood. There are four public houses, pubs, but they are now practically deserted. Well, guess where we are staying right now? We've been staying in this converted chapel in Cunwood. North Wales. We've been here for two weeks. We just found it on the internet, got a really good deal for, for a couple of weeks. And as I was saying, you know, we are following the Holy Spirit, opening miracle cafes, working with people around the world to open miracle cafes and start spirit lifestyle classes. But we're sort of in between, you know, and waiting for the next one and not knowing where, where should we live. So just looking around, literally just looking around for really the cheapest places to stay, not too far away, you know, and we end up here. And as I say, we've already been, you know, in the last video I did, I was talking, we were on Bardsley Island in North Wales and really sharing how we ended up following in the footsteps of the pilgrims on the North Wales Pilgrims Way without even knowing it. And here we are, without even trying, we've ended up in this converted chapel that experienced the Welsh revival back in 1904, 1905. Um, this chapel was actually built in 1889. Now, you can imagine the scene. So I'm on the balcony right now. I can imagine people up here on the balcony. The whole place, you know, behind me, just packed out, just with so many people who have come because they want to praise God, they want to worship Him, they want to get into His presence, they just want to uh, pray for their loved ones. Picture the scene. This place and others like it packed out, full of hungry people, just ordinary, everyday people coming in, drawn by the presence of God. And there would be, maybe there'd be somebody who would start praying out for a loved one, their son, their daughter, their husband, their wife. Then they'd be like, God, please help them. Please, you know, release your kingdom into their hearts. Let them get saved. Let your kingdom come. We pray for their soul. And they'd be praying in, as an open meeting, they would just start praying. And very often that loved one would be here, would be actually in the same meeting that they were in. And they would hear them. Sometimes that person was at their workplace or whatever they were doing and not in the chapel. But while the person's praying for their loved one, 
the loved one is getting saved. They're having visions of Jesus. They're, having, they're, they're crying out for mercy. They're really feeling the weight of their sin. They're seeing Jesus on the cross. Just picture the scene and they start crying. Ah, you know, help me, have mercy on me, Lord. And they radically get born again. And then in the midst of the meeting, they start praising the Lord. And then everybody erupts and the sound of the singing of those Welsh voices singing in the Welsh language, just praising, glorifying God, just begin to imagine it. And then somebody reads some scripture and then somebody shares a testimony of, until yesterday, I was a drunkard. I was out on the streets. I had no hope, whatever, you know, all these things. And people are like, I've met Jesus and my life has changed and I praise him and I'm not a criminal anymore. I'm, I'm back with my wife, my husband, whatever. And this is what happened. Just not just one, not just two, but hundreds and hundreds and thousands, a hundred thousand converted, giving their lives radically, getting saved, giving their lives to Jesus in a short space of time. And that then became a whole movement. It impacted America. It impacted so many other nations in Europe, right across the world were impacted by the move of God, the revival that broke out in Wales in 1904. And it just went exponentially around the world. And of course, the Pentecostal movement came out of that through Azusa Street in America, in LA. You know, what was interesting was only this morning did I read that Evan Roberts was praying, fasting, seeking God, wanting revival to break out in his nation for 13 years. And it makes me emotional because... Similarly, now I'm not saying it's on the same scale, but it really re resonates with me because you may not know my story, but <clears throat> for something like 12 years, I was praying, I was fasting, I was contending, I was stepping out in faith and praying for people and wanting to see God move in revival and God send revival, please, we need you to move. And I would, we were living in a little village called Sorgal in Chester, which is, you know, it's half England and half in Wales, Chester is. And we were living there. And to get to Sorgal, I would drive through Blaken, this neighbourhood, deprived neighbourhood as it was, 18,000 people just on the edge of Chester. I would drive through and I'd see these people. Cr you know, crime rate was high. People were lost, lonely, in pain, ill health, out of work. And I would just cry and I would pray and through the night. And it went on for so long. And... Rob didn't know what to do with me. It was like, I just had this, uh, this burden from the Lord and I'd be praying. Sorry. <laughs> and then I'd read the Gospels and I'd just see what Jesus was doing and what he called us to do. He said, go out, lay everything down, follow me and go and extend the kingdom of heaven and heal the sick and raise people from the dead and cast out demons. And he called us sent us out to do that and I was trying and nothing seemed to be happening but I'd read about past revivals like the Welsh revival like about Evan Roberts like I'm talking to you about and it really inspired me and I was and seeing what the the, the disciples were doing in the book of Acts I was like I want to see that so badly and it ended up where the Lord actually called us to lay down our lives again you know give up the career give up the business give up the dream home move to Blake in itself and we started up a little cafe you might know the story in 2009 and as soon as we opened our little cafe miracles began to break out revival came to our little little community of Blake and 18,000 people into you know the edge of North Wales in northwest England in 2009 and just really took off hundreds of people literally giving their lives to Jesus because of supernatural demonstrations of the gospel. And what was interesting is, you know, I said I've been praying for revival for all these years. And just about the same time we opened our cafe, the Lord said to me, he's like, you're praying for revival. But you're praying, you know, God rend the heavens and come down. But he said to me, I already did that over 2,000 years ago. I did it. I came down, I made a way, I gave my life, I went to the cross, I sacrificed my life for you, for everybody in the world, and I rose again, and you now extend the kingdom. He said, instead of praying for revival, be revival. 
And that's what I started to do. I thought, okay, let's, let's do this. We opened our cafe and I thought, I'm just going to, Jesus is in me. Jesus is in you. If you've asked Jesus into your life, if you follow him, you have the kingdom of God within you. So really now it's up to us to release the kingdom everywhere we go, whether it's in a cafe, whether it's in a chapel, whether it's in a workplace with neighbours at home, wherever you are. As we begin to release the kingdom of heaven, no matter where we are, that's when revival comes. That's what happened with Evan. That's what happened with us in Chester, in Blake and Chester in 2009, in all these other places where we've been and where we're going. And we just, it hasn't stopped. And it's just going to increase and increase. But that is a real key. It's the, like Evan was just praying and praying. And he then stepped out in faith. You know, he started those meetings in faith and gave up his um, Bible college in faith because of what God has shown him and spoken to him and he knew it and he stepped out so really Lord we pray for everybody watching that you would speak so clearly to each one of us that you would ignite the passion that's in our hearts what you've put on our hearts to do what you've called us into Lord that you would help us to surrender everything to lay down everything that we can to follow you and that you would speak so clearly Lord, that we would know by faith what we need to do next and we would step out. And it's going to look different for everybody. You don't necessarily have to start a cafe. You don't have to go to a chapel and start meetings like Evan did. But whatever the Lord puts on your heart to do, do it with all your heart, with all your might. And, you know, just talking about the singing and the amazing um, feeling, what it must be like in those meetings in the Welsh Revival as the singing, the praising, the worshipping and those new converts. The only thing that we've experienced anything even a little bit like that is when we started our School of Spirit meetings back in the day in Blaken. We had the cafe, even before the cafe, we, me and Rob started Friday night meetings, Sunday morning meetings. We met for quite a while in uh, the Sports and Social Club. It was basically a bar and people would come. And what was incredible was we were getting people giving their lives to Jesus through the supernatural, through healing, miracles, deliverance, supernatural things happening. And Rob, who led worship most weeks, he put together a song based on an old hymn called Blessed Assurance. And I'm going to play it in a moment for you, and then I'm going to come back and pray for you. So basically, the, you'll know the chorus probably um, from this old hymn. But he wrote verses and it was based on some of the people that were giving their lives to Jesus in our little cafe. There was Matt and Mark. They ended up um, getting pulled into our cafe by an angel. They, they were only young two guys and they ended up getting radically saved and we baptised them in a paddling pool in our garden. Um, they were set free from um, drugs, from suicidal thoughts, from loneliness and um, we also had Mandy who was oh she'd had something like over 200 convictions and she was um, an addict she had heroin and crack cocaine she was addicted to for so many years and alcohol and she was schizophrenic and so many other things going on in her life and one day she didn't even know our cafe was there um, she hears a voice when she was trying to get some drugs she hears a voice saying go to the cafe she comes to our little cafe she gets radically saved as well <laughs> and there was kieran he was the first young man her first person but he was a teenager at the time who he got healed that's when the miracles broke out when we prayed for his broken ankle which got instantly healed he's in the song as well and of course terry fingers you may have heard the story where he had a glass in his fingers from climbing into like through a broken window years before and the glass got embedded in his fingers and that came out supernaturally he ended up giving his life to jesus as a result as well so rob put together um the you know the song that you're about to hear and what was incredible was he and the our band were there playing the song we're all singing it in school of spirit meetings packed out meetings and those new christians were in there singing and, and praising God of what has happened to their lives. They're joining in with these songs. So um, that, was, that was so cool. So we're going to play that for you now. So watch this and then I'll come back and pray with you. Believed in God. 
got saved today Lump on her arm just faded away Shirley came in on crutches soon She walked right on across the room Carl was freaked by his ankle sound Did a some salt, landed on the ground Dave's knee got healed, he didn't know how Thank you very much, it's better now It's better now And Mark laid the Bible Scott say baptized became disciples Pete got skin grabbed Kieran got a fright Mel transported in the middle of the night Terry came in with his fingers in pain Glass come out in Jesus' name Next day came Terry with a story to tell Glass in his foot came out as well Came out as well This is our story In the book of Acts, we read how well, Jesus, you know, he's about to go back to heaven and he sends, says to his disciples, actually the end of Luke, but he sends, says to his disciples, just wait because you need the Holy Spirit to come upon you, to be clothed with power from on high. So they are obedient to what he asks them to do and they wait and they pray and they get together. There's about 120 of them at the time. And we read in Acts 2 where the Holy Spirit comes he's poured out they get full of the holy spirit and as a result supernatural things begin to happen they have power like never before <clears throat> and thousands of people get get saved in even in one day and then the church just grows and grows and like what happened with evan roberts he got baptized in the holy spirit he got full of the holy spirit right before those he started those meetings and then the presence of god was there and that's what attracted the people that's what is the power of jesus through the power of the holy spirit is what we need so let's pray right now for the holy spirit to come and you can pray too so just pray along with me father god we thank you for your son jesus jesus we thank you that you came that you did rend the heavens and come that you gave up everything for us so we can be forgiven we can be free we can inherit everything that belongs to you. Everything that you have is now ours. So come Holy Spirit and clothe us with power from on high. We ask you to do it right now. 
we need you. We are so hungry and thirsty for more of your presence. And we thank you that we have it all, but Lord, we want to see that. We want to see that manifested in our lives. So Lord, as we choose to lay down our own lives and surrender our hearts to you fully, then come and fill us with your spirit. Empower us, anoint us, send us out. We are willing to go. We want to see you revive us, revive the church. Revive the church. Like Evan Roberts said, bend the church and reach the world. So bend us, Lord. Let us, we bend, we bend the knee to you, Jesus, that you, we surrender to you. You would come in and fill us with your spirit and send us out. We are willing to go wherever you send us. Thank you, Lord, for calling us. Come and fill us with your spirit. You might feel something happening right now as you're praying. Just let me know what, you, what you're experiencing. I want to know about it. Just write it in there, in the comments. Um, send us a message. Uh, go to our website, spiritlifestyle.org, and you'll find a way to contact us there. Just get full of the Holy Spirit and just start stepping out in faith and just see what God will do. Because, you know, we could be waiting forever for God to come and break out in revival. But actually, he said, you be revival. You're the ones that you've been waiting for to come. <laughs> Let, as we step out and do what God's asking us to do and just give of ourselves and reach out to others through demonstrations of God's love and his power through the Holy Spirit, that's when we're going to see revival come to the whole world and the harvest come in. So thank you for watching and on the next video I'm going to be sharing more from this place in Cunwood, from this chapel. I'll share some more of my Welsh heritage and some more of the Welsh revival and pray for you again. So stay tuned, watch the next video and I'll see you soon.